You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all to go underneath the, uni the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is a question. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sacrifice to have what you say you want to have? This is a rhetorical question that I'm posing for today's topic, but it's not a rhetorical question for you because you actually need to answer this. Now, before we get into it, first, let me tell everybody, I have a daily motivation text that I send out free of charge to everyone who is in my texting community. If you would like to receive this daily motivation text, all you have to do is text me at my number. The number is 305-384-6894. Let me tell you why you want this. I could have told you that before I told you the number. Let me tell you anyway. Every day when I send this message, I guarantee that this message is going to keep you focused, sharp, and on point for the day in front of you. And then I'm going to send you another one the next day keep you focused, sharp, and on point for that day in front of you. So you're going to be so focused, sharp, and on point, and it's going to accumulate. It's going to compound over time on top of itself that you're going to be sharp every single day if you're getting this daily motivation text. That's only the first step. There are more steps to take getting into this world of work on your game, but that's the first one that you could take right now. So send me a text at my number. It is listed down below in the show notes so that every day when I send that message out, you are on the receiving end. You're on my recipients list now. Let's get into today's topic. What do you want to give up? Now, I talked in episode 2174 that there are no perfect scenarios in life. There are only trade-offs. So knowing this and understanding it on an emotional and logical level, let's talk more about this today and figure out what those trade-offs are going to be for you. Because again, no matter what you do in life, there's something that you're going to have to trade off in order to have the outcomes that you want. Any Even the great outcomes that you want, there's something you have to give up in order to get them. Do uh, you understand? Let's talk about exactly what I mean. Point number one, topic once again, is what are you willing to give up? Life is a series of trade-offs. That's all life is. Everything you get in life, you got to give something up to get it. Everything you lose, you get something in exchange. This is the yin and the yang of life. You cannot get all the stuff you want without making some exchanges in order to get them. All right, what's the last thing that you purchased? Everyone who's listening, what's the last thing you purchased? If you paid for anything that you gave money up for, whether it was you paid your cell phone bill, you went to the grocery store, you went to the movies, uh, you paid for some gas in your car, you bought a bag of chips, whatever it is, the last exchange that you made, you gave something up to get something, right? You needed a full tank of gas, what'd you do? You put your credit card in the machine and you got a full tank of gas. You gave something up, you got something. You paid your phone bill, or you went to get your phone activated or keep your phone activated and keep it working, you paid the bill. There's something that you give up. If you paid a, you made a mortgage payment, a rent payment, a credit card payment, what'd you do? You gave something up in order to get something. That's all we do all of life. We do it all the time. Any of you who just, who is in the gym right now, I know some people listen to podcasts while they're in the gym. What are you giving up? You're giving up some time. You're giving up some energy. You're giving up some sweat. You're giving up some physical comfort in the gym right now in order to do what? In order to be healthier, to look better, to lose some weight, to live longer, to have a healthier metabolism so you can be around for your kids and your grandkids. You're giving something up in order to get something. If you're listening to this show right now, what you're giving up is the opportunity cost of anything else you could be listening to or watching right now. Or why are you doing it? You're making that exchange because you are gambling that based on what I'm going to give you here on this show, it is worth more than what you could be getting in all the other things that you're doing. We call that opportunity cost. So you're trading something off. You're giving up a little bit of your attention at least or at least a little bit of your attention you're giving up your time to focus on this in lieu of all the other things you could be focusing on and using your time on right now in this minute so we're making trade-offs all the time in life you may not think about it like this but this is what is actually happening and understand that you can't get the things that you want without making exchanges right? everything you have in life there's an exchange that you gave up for it, whether you are aware of it or not so the question is what are you willing to give up to get what you really want in life all the things that you really want, what are you willing to give up in order to have them? I'm talking about the things that you don't have yet. 
So court, but the things you already got, you've already given some things up. And there are some things that you have in life right now, some of you that you are continually giving something up in order to continually have that thing. There's, there's a continual, continual exchange that is going on. But what are you willing to give up in order to get some other things that you want in life that you don't have right now? Some people are not willing to give up anything. And this is, this is what it is. Some people want everything to fall in line perfectly just for them without doing any of the additional work or making any of the additional trade-offs. Now, they're not going to get it. I mean, they can hope for it. They can want it, but they're not going to get it. And hopefully they wake up and they understand that. But I'm assuming that you're not one of those people who has that problem. And if you are, then I just solved it for you. Because I just told you a sentence ago that it's not going to happen that way. And you are willing to make some sacrifices since you're not like them. You're willing to make some sacrifices and to consummate some exchanges in order to become the person who you want to become in life. All right. So understanding this, here's the question. What are your trade-offs? What are you willing to give up? And while you think about that, let me throw a wrench into your thinking because this is not as easy as it sounds. Because right now, and I've asked people this in my, my text community, Again, my text community is not just daily motivation. You're going to get daily motivation, but I send out other texts about other things. Sometimes I ask a question. Sometimes I make an announcement. Sometimes I will I will respond to you individually and I may ask you a individual personal question about what you're doing, what you're working on, where you're going. And I will respond back to you. So sometimes when I'm texting people and I ask them, hey, you know, this is the thing they tell me something that they're working on. I say, OK, well, what's the process? What's the plan? How are you going to actually make it happen? What's the strategy that you have in place to do it? And they tell me what trade offs they don't say it. They don't use that language, but they tell me what trade offs they're going to give in order to get the outcome. So somebody will say something like, well, Dre, I'm trying to get my finances right and make more money. And I say, OK, well, what's the process? What are you doing right now in order to get your finances right and make more money? And they'll say something like, well, I'm taking up a second job or I'm putting in more time at work or I'm. Um, you no, know, starting this side hustle or I'm you no know, hustling harder on my business. What are they telling me? They're telling me that they are trading. Here's a trade off. They're giving up more of their time and energy and attention in order to do what? To bring in more revenue, to bring in more income. That is a trade off. So while you're thinking about the trade off, because the question is that I asked you, by the way, just to remind you, what trade offs are you willing to make to become the person who you want to become right now? And while you're thinking about it, I'm going to throw a wrench into your thinking because I know that you're going to come up with some convenient answers. And this, those answers that I just told you as an example that people text me, those are the convenient answers. Yes, I'm going to work harder. I'm going to start this side hustle. I'm going to you know, get this second job. I'm going to pick up more hours. All of those are convenient answers when you're asked what trade offs you're willing to make. Yes, they are convenient. And let me tell you why. Let's move on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is what are you willing to give up? Number two, here's the kicker, everybody. The trade-offs that you will need to make to get what you really want in life are not just the easy trade-offs. Now, what does that mean? The easy trade-offs are the ones that immediately come to mind when someone asks you, what are you willing to do to get what you want? Those are the easy trade-offs. So if I ask you, what are you willing to do to get what you want? And you say something like, like we talked about a couple episodes ago when we talked about qualitative change versus quantitative change. And we talked about how you know, being a model is not about being pretty. All right. The easy changes are the ones that immediately come to mind, such as I need to focus more. That's an easy change. You might, might not be easy for you to focus, but it's an easy change, relatively speaking, because the first thing that you thought of, I'm going to work harder. I got to put in more time. I need to believe in myself more. I just got to be more focused. All of those are easy changes. They're easy trade offs. Those are things that first come to mind to you because they are things that are within your mental comfort zone. Maybe you physically haven't done them yet. They might be in your physical comfort zone, but they're definitely your mental comfort zone. And the mind controls the body. All right, everybody has heard the phrase mind over matter, right? When you get your mind in the right place, you can get your body to do whatever you want to do. Your body can do anything as long as your mind is in the right place to do it. All right, this is why people go to some conferences and they walk on fire. All right. Could you walk on fire in your normal mind state? Probably not. But you get yourself in the right mind state. You can walk on fire and don't even bother you. Mind over matter. This is the way that it works. So here's what you got to understand. The biggest trade offs that you're going to make, they're going to make the biggest changes in your life. They're not quantitative. We just talked about this a couple days ago. 
These are all quantitative. The first things that come to your mind are usually quantitative changes that are within your comfort zone. The real changes are going to be qualitative. They're going to be out of your comfort zone. For example, if you're a person who's always late, you're always late to work, you're late to meetings, you're late to appointments, you wake up late, you go to bed late. If you're a person who always has lacked confidence, you're a person who procrastinates and you decide that you're going to give up being late, you're going to stop second guessing yourself and you're going to start doing stuff now instead of doing things at the last minute to solve your three problems relative, your three problems. So you're going to stop being late by giving up being late. You're going to work on your confidence by no longer second guessing yourself. And you're going to deal with this issue of procrastination by doing stuff now instead of the last minute. All right, all fine and good. But these are all easy trade offs, easy trade offs. Why are they easy? Because when I'm getting ready to, for example, this is just me giving you an example about me. I'm getting ready to run in a 10K race. I got I did one this year, came in first place in my age group. I got two more for the end of the year. I wish there were more, but they don't really do a lot of them in the, in the summertime in South Florida. I guess it's too humid for folks. But anyway, when I'm getting ready to run in a 10K race. I give up, quote unquote, give up eating candy for maybe a month or a few weeks before the race because I know my body performs better without all that you no know, table sugar, that processed sugar in my body. But I like candy, but I give it up. I like candy, but it's not hard for me to give it up because I know what's on the other side and I could you know, eat fruit and other stuff. It's not like I go crazy not being able to eat candy. It's okay. It's easy for me to not eat it. Here's the point. The things that you really want will require some trade-offs that you don't want to make. I just want that to marinate. And I want you to marinate on that one for a few seconds before I keep talking. The things that you really want in life will require you making some trade-offs that you absolutely do not want to make. They will be uncomfortable for you. So my question is, what are those for you? When you list the trade-offs that you're willing to make, I want you to look at the list. What on that list is actually hard for you to let go of? So when I asked you on question, point number one, what are the trade-offs you're willing to make? And you started thinking of all the trade-offs that you want to make. Here's my question. Name one of those trade-offs is actually hard for you. Name one of them that's difficult. I mean, emotionally difficult. Forget physically difficult. Emotionally difficult for you to do. I would guess that before I made this point, not one of them fits this description. None of those trade-offs that you are willing to make is emotionally difficult for you because if it was, you probably wouldn't have said it. Am I right or am I right? What are these trade-offs will be a big qualitative change in your life? Probably none of them. See, the trade-offs that make the biggest difference in your life are not quantitative, more, better, harder, faster. They are qualitative, completely different, change in approach. So really is about your sacred cows. You don't know what a sacred cow is. Those are the, the things that you would hold on to no matter what in life is like the last thing you would give up is the sacred cow. What are some sacred cows that you're willing to slaughter in order to get what you want in life. In other words, some long held beliefs, not ideas, not opinions, beliefs that you're willing to challenge in order to get what you want in life. I told you in episode 1699, the topic was about four ways to avoid living in the past. And this is all, is all about sacrificing your sacred cows. Listen to episode 1699, link down below in the show notes. One or more of your sacred cows, your long held beliefs will likely need to be sacrificed in the process of you achieving your definite chief aim in life. Most people don't have a problem making changes that they're comfortable with. I mean, if you're comfortable with a change, why would you have a problem with it? I mean, if I don't like the fact that I've been feeling drowsy early in the mornings because I'm not getting enough sleep, then I'll be comfortable going to bed a little bit earlier. So I make sure that I get more sleep. If I'm comfortable with that, then I'll have a problem with that change. Why not? And I want to do it. Most people don't have a problem eliminating things that they already know and want to eliminate. But the real changes that you're going to need often involve you making an alteration that you really don't want to make or something you weren't even thinking about changing, but now you got to change it. The changes that are easy for us are usually things that we already know we need to change. We just haven't done it. We just haven't given ourselves a strong enough reason to do it. So this is the person who likes to eat ice cream and they're you know, 10 pounds heavier than they want to be. And I take a look at their situation and say, well, you need to stop eating ice cream. And they say, yeah, I know. All right. Those, those are the easy changes. All right. Those are the ones that you already know about, the ones that you're comfortable giving up. OK, you just haven't given yourself a strong enough reason to do it. The changes that I'm talking about here is not those. 
Those are the changes. I'm talking about the changes that you weren't even considering that you would need to do in order to take your game to the next level. But once it gets brought up to you, you're like, damn, I got to You want me to make that change? Whoa, that's a lot. Those are the ones you might have to think about for a day or two before you actually do it. All right. That's what I'm talking about here in point number two. Let's move on to point number three while you think about that. Today's topic, once again, is a question. What are you willing to give up? Number three. Here's another hint. The trade off that you need to make may not be so obvious. It's definitely not going to be obvious to you. Because if it was obvious to you, then you would already probably at least start it doing it. Maybe it's something that has to be tested amongst your sacred cows. Maybe, for example, what if the work on your game podcast should be three times a week instead of every day? All right, that's something I wasn't considering, but maybe that's the sacred cow. Like right? the show being every day, I talk about how it's every day. I boast to you how the show comes out every day. Nobody else can put it out every day. It's a sacred cow in my mind. But what if someone came along and gave me a logical reason why I should cut it down to three times a week? Maybe I should make the material clean with no profanity. Maybe not. But the more things you're willing to look at and possibly change, the more opportunity you have you have to get to where you want to be. The more things you're willing to change doesn't mean you actually change them. But the more things you're willing to even consider changing, the more possibility you have of getting where you want to get to. In order to see this change, you may need a second or third set of eyes in a form of a coach, a mastermind group, a yeah, one of those who can see what you cannot see for yourself and help you identify a change that you otherwise never would notice. This is the reason why I have told you many times you need to be in a mastermind. You need to join a mastermind. You need to hire a coach. The reason why you need to do these things, is because these people not only will put a foot in your ass to help you do the things that you know you need to do, but you're not doing also because they can see things. If you get the right people, they can see things that you cannot see and they have insights that you otherwise would never get on your own. And they will move you to make qualitative changes that you would never make by yourself. This is the reason why it matters so much to leverage the tools and the skills of other people. Why would you do everything by yourself when there are 8 billion people on the planet? That makes no sense. This person or these people, whoever it is, can also help you get through the emotional trauma of making certain changes since these changes are not changes that you would think of or expect or be able to do on your own volition. This is the reason why utilizing other people matters so much, because there are certain changes that you would not do by yourself because they're outside of your comfort zone and there is too much internal resistance for you to do it on your own. Do you all know that? Human beings, we have a certain threshold of, of pain that we would put ourselves through. It's very difficult for a person to really push themselves as hard as they could, let's say in the gym, in a workout on their own, simply because there's a, a certain level of pain that human beings will not put on themselves, but we will easily put that pain on other people. It's much easier for you to push somebody else past their pain threshold than it is to push yourself past your th pain threshold. Now, are there exceptions to this? Yes, but that does not mean that the general point is not true. So this is why you got to get other people around you, because if you could do it all by yourself, well, then human beings wouldn't be social creatures. All right? We could just make all our changes that we needed on our own. We, didn't, we wouldn't even need this show right here. So this is the reason why it matters to leverage the, the brains of other people and let other people leverage your brain too. Maybe not in the same way, but in different ways. Recapping today's topic, which is what are you willing to give up? This is an open ended question. Point number one, life is a series of trade offs. You cannot get all the stuff you want in life without making exchanges in order to get there. You make exchanges every single day in life. You may not call them exchanges, but they are exchanges and opportunity calls every single day. So are you willing to make since you're willing to make sacrifices and exchanges to become the person you want to become? What are the trade offs you're willing to make? And while you're thinking about it, here's the kicker. Point number two, the trade offs you'll need to make to get to where you really want to get to in life are not just the easy trade-offs. Most of the time you ask somebody, what trade-offs are you willing to make? They'll list the easy stuff, the stuff that's easy for them to do, easy to think of, things they've already been thinking of, maybe things you're already doing that are comfortable for you. They're in your mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical comfort zones. And these are the easy trade-offs. But the real differences that you're going to make in your life are going to be trade-offs that you don't want to make, things that you actually don't want to do, things that you thought weren't even on the table, they're on the table. It's kind of like any of you ever seen the show Shark Tank, and an entrepreneur comes on there and they present their business and they offer, well, I'll give you this percentage of the business for this much money. And then one of the sharks says, you know what? Well, I want a little bit more of the business. I'll give you a little bit more money. And the entrepreneur kind of freezes up. He's like, man, I was offering 30% of the business. You want 60% of the business? I wasn't thinking about giving up majority ownership of my own company. But these, again, if you want this money, you might have to make a trade off that you aren't willing to make. And I'm not saying that's necessarily what they have to do. 
but you get the general point that I'm making here. The trade-offs that are going to get you to where you want to go in life will actually be hard for you to let go of. What of these trade-offs will be a big qualitative change in your life? The biggest changes are going to be qualitative, not quantitative, not just doing more, better, faster, harder. It's going to be making a big change, doing something that you weren't thinking about doing, eliminating something that you thought would never go away. Those are the kind of changes that I'm talking. Point number three, here's another hint. The trade-off you need to make may not be something that's obvious. All right, it might be something that is has to be tested amongst your sacred cows, meaning things that you never thought you would let go of. They are part of your beliefs, not opinions, not thoughts, not ideas, but beliefs that are hardwired into you. You might have to make a change in that area in order to get to what you want in life. And if you're not willing to do that, then you may not be able to get the change that you want. This is why you got to have another set of eyes, a second or third set of eyes in the form of masterminds and coaches who can see what you can't see and can push you to do things you otherwise would not do because emotionally there's a threshold of what you will put yourself through, but that threshold does not exist for another human being. So all that said, two things for you to do. Number one, get my daily motivation text by texting me on my number 305-384-6894 and go to work on your game university.com. You can see my group and one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. My one-on-one -on -one program is a link at the top of the page. You can sign up for a call. My group coaching program, all the information is right there on that page. I do a live training every single week in my Bulletproof Mastermind and coach you on exactly where you're at, what you're working on, where you need to get to. We make sure your mind is in the right place, understanding where your business and career are at. Then we get into the strategies. Make sure you're operating by accurate formulas to get to where you really want to go based on the roadmap and reverse framework and formula that I put together. Make sure everything and everyone is being held accountable. And then we get to the execution piece. That's all happening in all of my group coaching programs, all my one-on-one -on -one and group coaching programs and all the information that you can get started by going to, this is what you should do, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre, all.